Welcome everyone to the sixth presentation of Talk Tech with Turtle. As we're recording this session, we ask that you please turn off your camera and mute your microphone. We encourage questions, but please use the uh, message feature. Uh, hello all, thanks for joining us. My name is Robert Benkov. I'm one of the automation specialists for Turtle and Hughes. Today's topics are on power quality and energy management, also MCCs, our presenters. One you may know from past presentations and also part of the Turtle and Hughes automation team is Casey. Also joining us is uh, Jose Pacheco. I hope I got that right. Power quality specialist with Rockwell Automation. Hello, guys. Thanks for putting on this presentation and, uh, you know, please introduce yourselves. Go ahead, Casey. Thanks, Robert. Um, so actually, let me make sure that I'm presenting and let me know when you can see my screen. All good? Yeah. Yep, you're good. All right, great. So thanks guys for joining us. As Robert introduced me, I'm Casey Klawicki. I'm an industrial control specialist for Turtle and Hughes in the New York and New Jersey metro area. And joining us luckily today is Rockwell's um, Jose Pacheco. Jose, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks Casey. So my name is Jose Pacheco. Um, as you mentioned, I'm from Rockwell. Um, I'm a power technology consultant, so I cover everything that has to do with drives, whether it's low voltage, medium voltage, power quality, uh, things of that nature. Thanks. All right. So as uh, Robert mentioned, today's presentation is going to be on power quality and energy solutions. And um, with that, I'll take it off. So a couple of terms that we're going to see throughout the presentation are power quality and power reliability. So an important thing to note is power quality management really points to the solutions that minimize the impact of both external and internal power quality events and conditions. So that's quality is really on the, the end user's responsibility, whereas power reliability, or we'll also see it as power and energy management, really looks to optimize the consumption and demand of energy in a plant or process. So the grid is designed for reliability, not quality. So a good rule of thumb is that customers or end users are responsible for protecting the sensitive equipment at their own expense. So the utility's job is to keep the lights on. And as you can see right here, power can be as high as 99.999% reliable. But what we see often is that 0.001% can take out a process as many as 20 to 30 times per year. And really what we're talking about is the sensitive equipment, the sensors, PLCs, network switches, HMIs, that kind of thing can really be affected by this low of a, um, of a spike. So the utility cannot provide perfect power quality and they are not required to, unfortunately. So, a little bit more on power quality. As I mentioned, it's both external and internal. And so we have to be able to, you know, monitor things like the weather, if something is, um, you know, hitting a power line, if there's construction, but also on the inside of our facilities. If we have a bunch of large motors starting at the same time, a lot of times a, a poor electrical connection is the cause for it. Um, these are all things that we need to be able to monitor in order to, you know, mitigate these power quality events. So again, when we look at voltage sags, which are the, the most common, as little as 80% remaining can impact production and it might not even flicker the lights. So it's very hard to detect something like that. And this can cause immediate long-term damage to sensitive electrical equipment. Again, some of the sensitive electrical equipment we're talking about, sensors, PLCs, switches, that kind of thing. So this is an approach that you'll see um, across a lot of different areas, but when we talk about the three tier approach in terms of power monitoring, um, really it's it's much like anything. It's hard to you know, solve a problem with first without first understanding the root cause. It's gonna be a challenge, it's gonna be costly. So you need to understand in terms of monitoring power and um, energy consumption, you need to know what is consuming energy, how much is being consumed and when, and that's in terms of, you know, uh, peak hours and, and uh, you know, the demand that your utility requires. The types of events are also a big um, impact and the duration of those. So we need to start by identifying and monitoring power. Once we have that kind of data, we can analyze it. And when we're talking about energy management or reliability, 
you need to find opportunities to reduce the energy consumption. And again, that could be shifting production schedules so that you're you're not always starting those large motors in peak hours that are that are determined by your, your utility. Um, it, that actually can help you uh, negotiate your utility for better rates. And overall, it just gives you a better understanding of energy's contribution to your overall manufacturing costs. How is it impacting uptime? How is it uh, impacting your overall profit margins? When we talk about power quality, again, the the end user's responsibility, this is more of looking for those events that are causing the most downtime. And once you have those, that would be when we look at the optimization and mitigation phase. That's the solution piece for this. So for reliability, for the energy management, the utility side, this usually results in optimizing um, the plant automation to improve overall equipment performance and efficiency. This is never going to be a one stop process and one step process. I'm sorry. You're not going to go from just not understanding your energy usage to suddenly fully understanding, optimizing your energy usage and just, you know, making your, your facility more um, efficient. Usually it's going to start with an energy management program and a lot of our customers will do this approach and it, it really in, entails making small investments in hardware and software so that you can actually visualize the energy behaviors in your facility and, and out. Um, this will help you save money and actually have the option to later reinvest to expand that optimization of your operations. When we look at power quality solutions, on the other hand, this is mitigating the issues that are causing the downtime. So these can be interruptions, voltage sags, which again, that's going to account for the vast majority of the power quality events that we see, but also surges and, and noise, harmonic distortion, that kind of thing. So once you learn and understand these events that are causing the most pain, that's when you'll be able to develop a strategy to mitigate. That you know you can't have the solutions until you understand you've identified and monitored those those problems. So again, when we when we uh, start this, we we always need to begin with identifying the problems. We have to figure out what types of of power quality events are affecting our facilities, how much energy we're we're consuming, what you know, what time we're consuming those. All of all of that information is important in, in um, identifying your issues. So again, the solution really does start with the ability to monitor and track power quality events. And when it comes to Rockwell Automation, there are several products in the portfolio to address this. And really what determines it is the level of power quality data that your customer or you guys as the end user are looking to um, capture. So the iSense voltage monitor, and we'll go um, further into both of these options. This really is looking at voltage sags. Um, this is something that you'd put on you know, your line side uh, of your, your main feed coming into the facility. And this is going to detect things that um, the power quality events from the utility side, voltage sags, interruptions, under voltage, that kind of thing. And we'll go a little bit further into this, but this is usually where people will start. Now the power quality meters, the power monitor 5000, and there are a couple of other flavors of it. These really look at things further than just the voltage. We'll look at harmonics and, and um, noise and things like that, but we'll get a little bit further into that. So this is really determined on what it is you guys are looking for in your facility. What are you trying to detect? And there's very often a, a combination of the two, bringing this to, to monitor the, the main feed, and then this will monitor more um, granular information on, on other power quality events. So the monitors provide detailed information, but ultimately it is up to the customer to analyze and understand the impact of information. So that's going to be the second phase, the identify, then analyze. So that's, again, a very important piece in this. So looking a little bit into the iSense voltage monitors, um, you'll see iGrid, that's something that we'll go into a little bit later. But this is, again, voltage sags under voltage, um, it's it's ideal for analyzing the feed into your facility. And again, this is a, a limited investment compared to some of the other power monitors and the power quality meters, as um, some may call them. Um, what this does is communicates all event data to the iGrid, which is a web-based application. So there's no software to install. There's no maintenance on that software, um, configurations or anything. Essentially, when a voltage sags, a sag occurs, um, this will pick up on it, and when you're back online, it will use Ethernet to, to push this data to the iGrid server, and you can use that to correlate with other events. 
power monitor on the other hand as you can see it's not just going to look at sags and interruptions but there's power factor total harmonic distortion consumption harmonics waveform capture you know the whole mishpoka you got it all in there and this is also going to be on ethernet um, this is a highly accurate, it's actually designed to the highest accuracy level allowed by EN um, standards. So this is going to be detailed, accurate power quality data. It's not just going to show you um, voltage sags and how they um, sit on a, on a grid. You'll see, um, again, and we'll, we'll show examples of it, but this is going to be a much more granular um, data set than, than you would see in a, a normal just voltage meter. And again, this is something that there's not just this power monitor 5000. It, there, are, there are tiers to this. There's a, a 1000, a 500, and other um, flavors of each. So um, we'll go into that briefly, but we didn't want to just give you a bunch of different part numbers and things like that. So um, there's also other features on this that will help you integrate it further into the factory talk suite. So um, there are add-on profiles and things like that that will help you with the total cost of ownership, just it's it's much easier to integrate this into your uh, programming environment, and that's not something that you'd see on uh, the iSense voltage monitors, for example, as those are just going to be sending um, information to the iGrid uh, web-based application. So, looking at both of them, why would you use iSense? Again, this is more of what is it that you're looking for in your facility. If you know that voltage quality is the main concern, the, the iSense is the most cost-effective way to, to um, identify those, those risks. Um, if, you want the, if you want more information, power consumption, power factor, that kind of thing, that's when you look at something further up from the, the iSense. And again, you might need both. You might want to look at an iSense on, um, you know, monitoring the, the main feed coming into your facility, but you also might have some critical motor loads that you don't want to ever have, um, you know, an undetected power quality event. And again, those can be really costly and you might not even see the lights flicker. So a, a lot of times we'll see customers that will have a, a, a combination of the two. Um, so the, the more complex challenges, obviously, harmonic distortion and transients and things like that, you're not going to pick up on that with the with an iSense voltage monitor. Um, so we can really tailor it a lot more closely to your specific application, your specific facility um, with these options. Um, again, this is showing just, you know, the, the the different capabilities of each, and these are just power monitor 5000. Again, there's a power monitor 500, 1000. There's a, a bunch of different options for this. We just wanted to show you um, this guy in particular as it's capable of the most. Um, but again, you know, all of these are capable of the same thing as the iSense voltage monitor. Um, the main difference being all of the additional capabilities that these have. So the iSense is vo focused mainly on, uh, on voltage. And again, that will account for the vast majority. I believe it's over 90% of power quality events are voltage sags. So it's not as if this is, you know, just some box that you're throwing on there. There's a lot of good information that you can get from this. And again, we'll we'll look at um, some of the data that you'll get out of an iSense, which is really helpful for correlating some of these events with um, your facility. So again, step two, once you have the data, now you need to analyze it. So when we look at power reliability or energy management, this, this focuses on finding opportunities to reduce energy consumption. And again, that's, you know, you could be shifting production, you might be um, not starting all of your motors at the same time, especially if they're higher amperage loads. Um, but in terms of power quality, it's usually looking for the events and correlating them to things that you've seen in your facility that are that are having a negative impact on you know your control equipment your um just overall unplanned downtime so we will get into the iGrid and it's been mentioned a few times this is an independent web-based tool this isn't something that is proprietary to Rockwell Automation um it's a really useful tool it's it's given us the the opportunity to correlate voltage events in areas that we didn't think we would be able to really um, work with the utility to find that information. So again, independent, it's not a Rockwell um, based application by any means, 
One of the more important things, I mean, obviously it's it's synchronized to the universal time clock, so it's extremely accurate, National Weather Service. But I think the most important thing to the iGrid is the number of monitors. This is talking about iSense monitors, over 3,000. I mean, we've had locations in, you know, pretty remote locations upstate New York where we didn't think that there was any chance that we would be able to see, you know, any data from an iSense monitor that would be able to correlate all the way out there. When in fact we we ran the report, there was a, a monitor within five miles that it's not right outside their facility, but it gave them a much more granular uh, data set than we were expecting because they were a remote facility. But there are so many iSense monitors out there that there's a very good chance that you'll be able to correlate at least something to what's going on in your facility. And that wasn't even an iSense monitor installed in that location. That was just using what was already existing on the global network. So the iSense monitors, um, I'm sorry, the iSense monitors and transmits power quality event data to the iGrid servers, and it's using an ethernet or modem connection to do so. So that data is collected, analyzed, and sent to subscribers in the form of um, email or text message, whichever one you prefer. And it'll be, you know, basically real time because as soon as these, these monitors come back on, they are shooting this data right to the server. So this is giving users the ability to view detailed quality event data and reports at any time. And by correlating these events, again, if you correlate a power quality event to an unplanned downtime event, it's giving you a lot more visibility into what's going on and why. And so then you can make decisions about mitigation strategies to prevent future downtime occurrences. So let's take a look at one of those reports. Um, this is one that's most common is uh, the the magnitude versus duration to try to find out you know how long an event occurred, you know how um, how much remaining voltage there was, and you see something like this where this lasted a thousand seconds and had zero voltage. You'll be able to say, oh, that's why that was happening for so long. Things like under one second. Well, and we'll get a little bit more granular with this in a, in a few slides, but things under one second might not go detected at all. So iGrid offers several tools to analyze voltage quality at both specific event and summary levels. So these are specific events, but you also have some summary um, level reporting as well. As soon as you install the monitor, it will start this, um, this analyzation. It'll, it'll start tracking the events and it will bring those events um, up onto the iGrid server. So it's going to examine timing, depth, and duration of events as we see on, on this chart, but it's also going to capture waveform and voltage RMS information that can make diagnosing downtime situations a lot quicker of a uh, process. And something to note, most voltage events are not three phase events so understanding why only one third of a machine for example went offline it can be very very difficult without monitoring in place and a lot of times it's going to result in trying to correct the wrong thing it's going to be misdirected efforts so this helps with downtime and just correlating those events as well and again this is a little bit more of a granular uh look at one of these reports so this was actually in uh, Chicago about 10 years ago. This was in 2011. So this was collected from 10 different iSense monitors. At this point in Chicago, there are guaranteed way more than 10 iSense monitors installed, but just something to look at in terms of, again, you look at one second or less, you can have a lot of uh, damage done to some of your sensitive control equipment. So the vast majority of the events are going to be for one second or less. Um, that's more than enough time for controllers and relays to drop out, but uh, not necessarily for you know enough for somebody to notice that a power quality event has occurred. Again, the, the lights may not flicker. You might not have you know the, those brownout uh, symptoms that you're used to seeing with a light flickering. That can that can still damage equipment. So when you look at this, you might think, wow, the, looking at all these events, the utility is kind of dropping the ball. But as a matter of fact, the utility did perform their obligation of providing 99.999% of uh, power, or power 99.999% of the time, I should say. Yet you still see all these events appear. Well, 
critical automation equipment like relays, PLCs, and again, sensors and um, network switches, HMIs, that kind of thing. These can be really vastly impacted by that 0.001%. So it can be a very short duration. It can just be a voltage sag, but those can definitely impact your uptime and overall plant performance. So power quality issues, what do we do about them? This is where we get into the optimization and mitigation feed. So for power quality, once you learn and understand the events that are causing the most pain, that's when you can finally develop a strategy to mitigate the risk. So these solutions, again, we can get pretty granular in terms of how we can tailor this to your specific facility. And for that, I'm going to hand it off to the expert on that and Jose Pacheco. Jose? Yeah, thanks, Casey. Yeah, thanks, Casey. So, um, so um, as you mentioned, um, I'm also hearing an echo. I don't know if you can mute your, your mic, please. Thanks. So as you mentioned, you know, depending on the condition or event that you're trying to mitigate, um, you know, there are several options, you know, within our portfolio that you can leverage. Um, so you can see down there, there is a disc or dynamic sag protection is the second uh, picture. Um, so that's uh, an intelligent solution based on capacitor technology that is focused at mitigating the shorter duration power sag. So in your chart where you show magnitude versus duration, you know, you, uh, DISC is really trying to target, you know, the, the types of events that would knock out a relay or a PLC. If you require mitigation for longer duration sags or power interruptions, uh, you know, a full out uh, blackout from the utility, then a UPS may be appropriate, uh, an uninterruptible power supply, and you know we'll get into those um, a little bit more. Next slide, please. So here we can see the uninterruptible power supply. Um, it's like I mentioned, designed to ride through prolonged interruptions and manage controlled shutdowns. Um, really, the goal is to avoid unwanted and costly system crashes. <clears throat> it's actually designed. Um, to more effectively integrate into a control system than a commercial UPS. And some of the key features include uh, ex expandable and hot swappable battery options, remote on and off capabilities, drive contacts for status, and replaceable surge protection. Next, please. Here we have disk or dynamic sag correction. So this is a battery free solution that protects devices from voltage sags and short interruptions that account for the vast majority of events impacting production, as we mentioned. Um, the product offering uh, includes single and three phase options ranging from two amps up to 2400 amps, depending how much you know uh, power flow you have on your systems, depending on your loads. And this solution can be optimized at a panel machine or even the facility level because it, it does come in different flavors. So what it what it does is that it, it uses um, um, whenever there's a power quality event, it uses the remaining power during a sag um, to compensate for the sag, which basically means that the power coming into the disk, um, you know, you may see um, an imbalance um, of phases or a, a full sag, and what's coming out of the disk is the perfect sinusoidal waveform that your loads are expecting. Um, Part of the design too is uh, it's a battery free design, so the product requires little or no maintenance, uh, which does reduce the total cost of ownership and increase reliability. And based on our data that we've collected over the years, um, we're confident to say that it's more than 98% efficient and we can support SAGs as, as well as short duration interruptions, as we'll see later. Next, please. So here's the portfolio. So, like I mentioned, it comes in different flavors. Um, really, the key takeaway is that. There's different offerings of disk uh, depending on the amperage and the voltage ranges, as you can see on there. And um, I mean, you can you can scale these out. You can have smaller disks for a line and a mega disk for your facility, for example. Next. So this chart, uh, um, we should be pretty familiar with it, but basically it illustrates the true power quality events that occurred in um, in Dallas over a one year span. And this data was collected from five different iGrid monitors or iSenses installed at various customer sites. So there's uh, three key takeaways here. I know it's kind of a busy slide, so I'll try to break it down. So as you can see, that cluster of the red squares, um, you know, these this shows that vast majority of events are for one second or less. 
which is enough time for controllers and relays to drop out, but not necessarily for someone to notice a power quality event has occurred. I mean, I'm sure we're all aware sitting in an office, you just see the light blink, that's enough to trigger some of these events. Um, the key takeaway number two is that the, the, that the utility performed to their obligation of providing 99.999% of the time, <clears throat> yet many events appear, as you can see on there. And the takeaway number three is that critical automation equipment, such as relays and PLCs, can be impacted by those more frequent short duration voltage sags as, de as depicted on the chart. So these events are likely impacting uptime and overall plant performance. So the shading here shows that the standard ride through disk can mitigate all those that big cluster of events that were power dropped, you know, at less than a tenth of a second. Then if you upsize the amperage and the ride through capabilities of disk, then you can mitigate more issues um, as shaded in by the orange down there. For anything longer than that, then that's when we have to consider an uninterruptible power supply. Next, please. So here's an example of the waveform captures of uh, basically disk in action. Uh, the top one shows the input waveform to the disk. So there is that red line showing the precise moment where the sag occurs. And the output waveform, if you line up that dashed red line, you can see that the disk is outputting um, a perfect sinusoidal waveform at the same time that the input is not perfectly sinusoidal. It's, you know, sagged. <clears throat> Next piece. So here, uh, like I mentioned before, there's different flavors of disk. Uh, disc. So uh, single phase sags, we can go up to five seconds. And as you go adding more phases up to three phases, then you have to consider um, that if you want to mitigate longer uh, power events, then you have to consider either an extended range or an ultra range. So here we can see the, the, the inner workings. Um, during normal operation, the disk monitors power, uh, power quality continuously while the power electronics are on standby. When an event occurs, the disk uh, corrects it in under two milliseconds and recreates the complete RMS voltage waveform, as we saw in the chart a couple of slides ago. And um, what our data says is that the average facility would see 20 to 30 events in the year, most lasting well less than a second. And in general, the power electronics are activated for approximately 30 seconds a year, which is why the product is so efficient. UPSs, um, they have similar principles, but there is a, there is a loss of some efficiency because the batteries uh, must be consistently trickle charged in order to provide the intended protection. So here we can put them side to side. So <clears throat> it's important to understand, you know, when when you might want to consider one over the other. Um, so this will provide ride through for the vast majority of voltage events with a lower cost of uh, total ownership. Then a UPS, um, if prolonged interruptions are a problem or controlled shutdowns are valued requirements for uh, you guys as our customers, then a UPS may be a preferred alternative. And here we have a success story. Um, actually, it was at an international food processing company. They mainly process uh, cereal. Um, so they were expecting a lot, uh, or experiencing a lot of costly, unexpected downtime incidents. Um, during their extrusion process, a split second interruption can trip the auger drive, which causes the cereal to harden, which ultimately destroys the product and clogs the dye. Um, this actually requires a full day of downtime and uh, or maintenance and, and upkeep, and they have to clean out the hardened cereal, reset the line and replace the product, which obviously just is pretty much a waste of time and, and uh, <clears throat> And efforts. So the solution here was that they would monitor the lines and the power that supplied them. They actually pinpointed their issues to voltage sags um, as the cause of these incidents. So they were considering a backup generator for these uh, for these conditions, but um, we you know made them aware of our of our disk solution, our dynamic sag corrector. So they piloted a program where they installed a pro disk backing up a single serial line 
and um, actually pretty soon after they put in the pro disc, uh, disc, there was a tornado that hit the area. So, you know, during the storm, there were lines that were just continuously just shutting down, except the one that was uh, protected by the disc. So <clears throat> what they realized is that like they actually had to manually shut down that line because the operators had to go take cover and, you know, find a safe location to to take shelter in. So, I mean, they, they were very happy with the with the solution. They actually installed more pro disks um, at different lines and they actually implemented a mega disk to protect the balance of the facility. So that was a facility wide solution and then they got more granular with the pro disks for their specific lines. So, I mean, they, they've successfully reported that all these voltage sags and all these uh, power conditions, power quality events were mitigated. And, um, you know, they're using iSense uh, monitors to prove out that at the time, at the moment of a power quality event, that disk is being triggered and actually mitigating those power sags. Right. So I think it's all from the session. So back to you, Casey. All right. Thank you, Zay. So that was the disk. That's the big boy. This is more of our other filter down, uh, or sorry, trickle down surge and filter products. So when we look at the, the surge products in particular, there's a, a few different options, and these are usually applied using a, a cascaded approach. So we can start from the main feeds with something like the DH, which is the heavy duty, um, down to control panel power circuits, which is more of the, the DS. And when we look at data network and device level protection, that's this yellow guy right here. So we do have a, a, a few different tailored options depending on your specific application. And again, it's usually approached with, um, you know, cascaded approach with this would be the main feed, control and power, and then data. So, um, you know, definitely a tiered approach for, for that um, to specifically tailor to your application. Let's see the, uh, the power filter products, on the other hand, um, those are also designed for control and power circuits within a an electrical panel. And the difference is really being that this PF, um, that guy is going to be um, panel mounted device where the DC is DIN rail. And you can see their specifics right here. Um, they look a lot like our bulletin 1606 power supplies, but they are not and they, they should be applied to protect devices within a control panel, such as, again, we're talking about PLC, PC, um, IO, power supplies, sensors, that kind of thing, sensitive equipment. So this is just an overview, uh, looking at a lot of the different products that we've looked at today, from the uninterruptible power supplies through the three different disc options, surge protectors, noise filters, just going over the, the different events and showing which ones protect which. So depending on your application, you might not be uh, in need of an uninterruptible power supply, whereas something like a, uh, a panel mounted mini disc might be something that will get you out of the dark. And again, this is a little bit more in terms of where in the facility you would use it. <clears throat> we looked at the mega disc in that use case that uh, was looking at the entire facility, whereas machine systems and lines might be better suited with a pro disc option. Um, and then, you know, just looking at the surge and filter, those are obviously used in both. So with that, we wanted to uh, give you guys some additional resources. If you're looking into um, these energy monitoring solutions, disk, uninterruptible power supplies, any of those things, we will provide these links. And um, with that, I thank you for joining us and open the floor to any questions. Okay, no questions. Okay, no questions. Uh, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, our next presentation of Talk Tech with Turtle will be on July 22nd from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. The subject matter will be on data collection methods. To find out more details on upcoming events and view past recordings, please visit turtle.com. Thanks again, everyone, for your time. And uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute your mic or type that in the uh, message area.